There are a number of other methods on collections that don't really fit into a category, but they're very useful and you should know about them. So we want to run through some of those as well. We have our array A. The first method is diff. So what diff does is it basically takes the difference between two collections. It's what's called a, a multi-set difference. So every value that appears in the sequence that you're diffing, the thing that you're passing in, is taken out from the original one. So if I pass in 2, 9, 6, 8, and I put in those last two kind of in the opposite order that they appear in the first collection to make it clear that order doesn't matter here, then we just have the 5, the 3, and the 1 left. What if I had taken out something that didn't exist? Well, that doesn't do anything because it wasn't there to be taken out. So diff allows you basically to tell the difference between two different collections in an efficient way. There is also a method called distinct. Now calling a dot distinct really isn't very useful because all the values in a are already distinct. It gives you back a new collection that doesn't have any duplicates. Let's go ahead and let's create something that has duplicates. Okay, so this collection has quite a few elements in it, but if I call distinct on it, we're only going to get 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, 1, 6, and 1, 7. Okay. And they are occurring in the order that they first appear in the original collection. Our next method is mkString. As we saw previously, arrays don't print nicely. Okay. So if you want to format an array nicely, the mkString uh, method is very helpful. It can even be helpful for lists if you didn't want to have it say the word list in front. Note that it's mk and then capital S string. And there are several versions of this method that take different arguments. The first version is I don't pass it anything, in which case it just sticks all the contents together and makes a string. And well. This is more useful than what we had originally, but it still doesn't really tell me much about which elements are separate elements. The next version takes a single argument that is a string, and that is used to separate all the values. So now we can tell that this array, each of those is a one-digit number as opposed to saying have a uh, three-digit number followed by a four-digit number in there. You might also want to put things before and after the string that's built. This one generally isn't quite as useful, but it's there just in case you want it. So we can put a first argument that's a string that is what we prefix the whole thing by, and then another argument that's a string that goes at the end. And so in this case, I put parentheses at the beginning and the end with the commas in between. And make string is very helpful for formatting things in a way that's nice for printing out for users. There is a patch method. So let's look at A again. Patch is actually quite powerful. What it allows you to do is take some subset of this and replace it with something else. Now the thing is the thing you're replacing it with could be larger, it could be smaller. So you can use patch to do things like remove stuff. So if I take A dot patch and the three arguments to patch are where we're going to do the patching. So let's say I want to start at the nine. That's index two. I'll what I want to patch it with, so what I want to put in there. Well, if I'm only going to remove stuff, then what I'm going to patch it with, a nice way to do that is with nil, and then how many I want to replace. I'm going to actually replace three values, nine, three, and one, and in this case, I'm just taking them out. So I'm replacing the nine, three, and one by nothing, and so I get that. However, I could have put inside of here array 77, 88, 99, and then I would get those values inserted there. So patch is the location you want to patch, what you want to put in that place, and how many things you want to replace with the patch. Simple method that is helpful at times is reverse. So you have a collection, you want it in the opposite order, reverse is, is nice there. This can actually be very nice for lists because a lot of times when you do recursive methods that build lists, 
because cons only prepends, it's actually much more efficient to use cons and prepend to the list and then at the end reverse the list than it would be to append to the end of the list as you go. We can also convert between arrays and lists. There is a to list method and then a to array method. And much like you're used to calling to int to double to string on things, we can convert one collection type to another collection type. Another method that is uh, potentially a little harder to understand is one called zip. And the name is actually supposed to invoke the image of a zipper, which is how it works. It's going to take two collections and it's going to zip them together. So let's go ahead and let's make another collection. I'm going to make this one a list. It's not going to be quite as long. Okay. And now I want to zip that with a, a dot zip of LST. And what this does is it pairs together the first element here with the first element there, second, second, third, third, fourth, fourth. As soon as either one collection ends, it stops doing its work. And it pairs them together inside of tuples. So I had an array of int and a list of string, and so I get back an array of int string. Had I done this the other way, list.zip with a, I would get a list, so the type that I get back is based upon the first argument, and inside of here my tuples are based upon the two values that I, that I put in. Uh, so you can see the 5 was associated with the 1 inside of a tuple here, the 2 with the string 2, the 9 with the string 3, and the 3 with the string 4. So that's the zip method. Quite frequently, one of the things you need to do is know where things are located by index in their list or array. And for that, there is a special method called zip with index. So I can do a dot zip with index, and it gives me back a new array. In this case, it had been an array of ints, so now it's int int, because the indices are all ints. If I had done list dot zip with index, I get a list of string int, because the original list was all strings, the indices are still ints, and so I get the index 0 for 1, 1 for 2, 2 for 3, and 3 for 4. In addition to these methods, we have a few methods that only work with things that are numeric. Okay? And these are the methods min, max, sum, and product. So I can take a dot min, and it will give me back the smallest value. It'll also work for string values because they happen to have a minimum defined on them. But you can't call these on anything. All the other methods that we've worked with so far, we could have a collection of anything that we wanted and it would work. I can also do max. I can take the sum of the values. Now list.sum isn't going to work. So even though you can concatenate strings together the sum method isn't going to do that. It really wants you to be doing numeric addition. And then we can also do product, which multiplies all the values together. Once again, that doesn't make any sense with strings. So these are methods that need to be done with numeric values for the most part. But these are helpful little methods for getting the minimum, maximum, the sum of a whole bunch of things, and the product. As you can tell from this, if I wanted to find the average of the things inside of A, I could simply do a dot sum divided by a dot length. Now that's doing integer division, so that's not perhaps what you want for your average. But if we convert one of them to a double, then we can get it to do uh, double division. And so we have floating points, and we get back a fractional value. That covers a fair number of uh, methods. You should think about how you might use these methods in solving various problems. Uh, but we've kind of covered at this point all the standard methods of collections that we're going to look at at this point. We still have another whole set of methods that are the higher order methods, and these are actually the things that are really powerful for us to use.